All right, Bears fans, if you want to beat the Broncos on Sunday and snap this godforsaken 13-game losing streak, hit the like button, like this video. It's on our shoulders at this point. If they're not going to uh, bring that extra juice on the field, we got to provide it from the stands. Hit the like button. Speak it into existence. I can't talk about a 14th straight loss. Go ahead and like the video, please. Is the clock ticking on Bears quarterback Justin Fields? That is where we start today's show. My name is Harrison Graham. You're watching Bears Now by Chat Sports. And Peter King hopped on the radio in Chicago, 670 the score, and said, I think Justin Fields probably has a few weeks, was the first part of the quote. And essentially what he was talking about to turn it around and prove that he can be this franchise's quarterback. Otherwise, they're going to shift their gears toward the future. Here's what Peter King had to say in further detail, he said, if you're the Bears, you're Luke Getze, you're Matt Eberflus, you're Ryan Poles, you basically say, hey, listen, we always knew that the biggest thing about this season is we had to know who our quarterback is going to be for 2024. It's either going to be Justin Fields, absolutely won the job, or we got to draft somebody. Right now, obviously, it looks like they're going to have to draft somebody. Now, he also said that Poles, in the four times he's talked to him, never told him that he was fully sold on Justin Fields, never told him that he was our long-term answer at uh, quarterback. Even said, never said, quote, Fields is our QB forever. And look, I obviously, right? I don't think anybody was like, Justin Fields is undoubtedly going to be given the next 10 years. He still had a lot to prove coming into the season, and it certainly has not been a, a good start. However, what does bother me about all of this and, and I agree this year more than anything else is about evaluating Justin Fields and you need a clear answer on whether or not he's the starting quarterback long term or not I've said that I, I, I think that all of that is true here's what bugs me though I feel like this is trending in a direction where they're going to make Fields the scapegoat that's going to save Matt Eberflus it's going to save Ryan Poles maybe even save a Luke Getze but there are problems all over this football team that go beyond Justin Fields. And I'm not saying Justin Fields is balling out and the rest of the team sucks. That's why they're 0-3. I'm not saying that. But to sit here and act like Justin Fields is the main and only problem, I just think it's disingenuous. And I feel like that's where this is heading in terms of, oh, well, we didn't draft him. He's the issue. Let us pick our guy now. Do they deserve to pick their guy? Let's break this down in further detail. Some of the Bears' problems. Number one. The trenches are garbage, both on the offensive line and the defensive line. You look at the defensive line first. This group is not getting it done. I like bringing in Yannick Ngakwe. I still think he'll have an okay season, but he's got one sack in three games. He's whiffed on a couple of other sacks. That's not what you signed up for. Andrew Billings, he's been your best defensive lineman by a wide margin. He's a career rotation guy. Justin Jones is average at best, well, probably a below average player. Demarcus Walker, he's given you nothing. You gave him three years and 21 million bucks. Rasheem Green, haven't seen him. Dominic Robinson, in a year and three games, eh, other than week one last year, he's basically been a total no-show. Your two rookie defensive tackles, there's been occasional flashes, but not much. The point is, this defensive line is not good. One sack, nine quarterback hits in three games. You had 20 sacks as a team last year. You're on pace to do less this year. And by the way, that was by far the lowest number in the NFL a year ago. Like, that was a clear area you need to improve while acknowledging, okay, you're not going to jump from dead last to middle of the pack, but can you be 25th? Can you be a 30, 32 sack team? You're so far from that right now. Like, you're looking like a team that might have 10 to 15 sacks, which is just absolutely atrocious. Uh, you look at the offensive line. Now, they get not a pass, but a little more leeway here because obviously there's been injuries and other concerns, right? Like Nate Davis, he had the personal issue. His mom passed away, which has prevented him from practicing and playing. Like, I get that. You can't plan for that stuff. Uh, but you had Cody Whitehair play center all offseason. At the last minute, you move him to guard. Uh, when Tevin Jenkins gets hurt, he goes on IR. You put Lucas Patrick in there. He doesn't look the part. Uh, Larry Borum's not having to play because Braxton Jones is on IR. So I get it. The injuries have not helped. But does any of us think this offensive line would be world beaters if they were all playing? I think it would be better. They certainly miss Tevin. Obviously, the Nate Davis thing, uh, for circumstances we couldn't have seen, 
That hasn't been able to work out up to this point. I'm still hopeful that it will over time, but I think we have to give that more time now. Uh, but the point being is your clear needs uh, were in the trenches, and you stink there <laughs> on both the offensive line and defensive line. And again, I'm acknowledging that you weren't going to fix it overnight. You picked Darnell Wright, number 10 overall. You signed Nate Davis. You've made some investments there, but bottom line is you're not getting it done up front on either side of the ball, especially on the defensive line, if we're being completely honest. So I say all of that, and I ask you, are you still a Justin Fields believer? Type B for believe, type D for don't. I still am like, like it, there's just like a voice in my head saying like, I've seen this guy play at a high level. Like the talent is there. He's got a rocket for an arm. He throws the ball nicely downfield. We know how good of a runner he is. The swagger he played with at Ohio State and even at times in his NFL career, like how can that just go away? Like, am I a believer that this coaching staff can figure it out with him, that this franchise can? That's pretty dwindling to a low place because you you just add it all up. You're like, well, maybe there's a reason this franchise has never developed a quarterback. B for believe, D for don't. I want to hear what Bears fans think. So more Bears problems. The defense is an absolute joke. You want to blame it all on Justin Fields? Be my guest. But I'm going to throw some numbers at you and credit Ollie Connolly of this note on Twitter. The Bears defense in the 20 games, Matt Eberflus has been the head coach. I get it. Alan Williams called the defense last year in week one this year. And last year, the personnel wasn't great. But still, you're 32nd in EPA per play. And that's expected points added. That's what that, uh, that uh, acronym means. 32nd in dropback EPA per play. 32nd in pressure rate. 32nd in pressure rate with a four-man rush. 32nd in sacks per game, 32nd in yards conceded per coverage snap. You're dead last in every advanced metric that matters. Dead last, okay? Oh, Harrison, you know, last year they traded away their pieces. They don't have uh, a great personnel. Okay, fine. Well, let's look at them this year. These are all this year's stats. Okay, number 29 in total defense. Bottom four, it's not dead last. Well, you're second to last in scoring defense. The only teams that that's worse is the Broncos, who gave up 70 last week. So, of course, that average is going to be a tick higher. Uh, you're 30th in passing defense. Only two teams are worse. You're 20th in rush defense. The run defense has gotten a little better. Billings has helped. The linebackers have been decent. So, okay, you're still below average, but that's been slightly better. Oh, let's go back to a bad. Uh, 32nd in third down defense. You are giving up 60% conversion rate on third down. A lot of those are third and longs. A lot of third and eights being given up. Um, guess what? Your head coach is a defensive guy, Remember? Matt Eberflus is a defensive guy. We question that. Like, you really want to go defense with the young quarterback? Okay, fine. Well, at least the defense will continue to be competitive. We know the, the Bears historically can play good defense. Not under a defensive head coach and Matt Eberflus, apparently. And, oh, okay, you're going to hire a defensive guy. Let's at least bring in a good offensive mind in here. Oh, that hadn't worked out either. We'll talk more about him in a little bit as well. In addition to, in a moment, Ryan Poles. Has he done a good enough job? Where does he rank on the blame game list because I don't think he's uh, something we should scoff over here. So stay tuned for that. But first, I want to talk about our sponsor, and that is Prize Picks. Want to spice up your game day, Bears fans? Well, get started with Prize Picks right now. Prize Picks is a skill based, real money daily fantasy sports game. If you're looking for a more fun way to spend your game days, look no further than Prize Picks. How does it work, you ask? Well, here's how. You pick two to six players, and if they will go for more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 25 times your money on any given entry. Check it out right now, pricepicks.com slash CLNS. Use our code CLNS. That's going to get you a deposit mo uh, match up to $100. They'll match up to $100. Uh, I got a couple of uh, picks I like here. More on Justin Fields' passing yards. It's at 184.5 now. I got it at like 168.5. Uh, but I still like the more there. He's thrown for 200-plus in two out of three games. I think he bounces back against a bad Broncos defense, at least to a level to throw for 185. And I'm going to go more on Russell Wilson passing yards in this game as well. Russ is actually uh, playing pretty well, averaging over 250 passing yards per week. And guess what? Uh, the Bears defense uh, isn't playing that well, and the secondary is banged up. So 20 to win 60 there. I think it's a good value. Pricepicks.com slash CLNS, code CLNS. That link and promo code in the description and comments of this video. You're not battling other people. You're just battling the projections. Go more, go less, make your picks, and make some money. Let's keep it rolling here with some of the Bears' problems. Has Ryan Poles built this thing properly? Now, do I expect it to be a complete product right now? Do I expect this team 
to contend for a Super Bowl in year two of this rebuild? No, I don't. But I expect it to be better than this. Poles' place in this is very real and should not be overlooked. And I like Ryan Poles. I like a lot of the way he, he thinks and processes and how he's reset the cap here and has got this team in a financial st stability place moving forward with flexibility. You got the Carolina first-round pick next year. I like all of that. But the first decision he made, number one, was hire Matt Eberflus, who then hired Luke Getze. So where does that leave you? First-time general manager, first-time head coach, first-time offensive coordinator, all of that with the second-year quarterback last year. That's pretty tricky. That's pretty tough. We probably should have considered that more at the time, but looking back on it, that's that's a tough sell. Uh, and then the roster miscues. The Ch Chase Play Claypool trade. I get why he did it, but at the end of the day, when you make a trade as a GM, you're going to be judged for it one way or the other. That has not worked out up to this point, and clock is very much ticking on that. Passing on Jalen Carter. I understand why they did it. There were red flags there. You're a young team. I like Darnell Wright, by the way. I think he's been playing well. I think he's going to be good. But your head coach has said this is the engine to this defense, and you have not been able to get pressure at all as a defensive line in two seasons. You had one sitting right there, generational talent. You passed on him. I understand why, but again, I'm not the GM. That's that's polls. That's his staff. He's got to make that decision. So I think Darnell Wright's got a bright future, but Jalen Carter's looking like an all-pro already. You passed on George Pickens last year and then drafted Bayless Jones around later. I like Jaquan Brisker, who you took instead of George Pickens. I like Kyler Gordon, but out of those three, who's been the most impressive so far in their young career? I would say George Pickens pretty easily. So, And listen, I, you know, the, these things have to be judged. Like You, you want to build through the draft. you got major question marks with a lot of draft picks. So my point being is, while I like Paul's processing, like uh, how he reset the salary cap, committed to a rebuild – you can't say he's hit on a bunch of picks. You can't say the roster decisions have all been sound, and you're not going to bat a 1,000 as a GM. I get that, but not looking great. Are you 100% sure you want to let him draft a quarterback if Justin Fields doesn't work out? It's something to consider if you are Kevin Warren. And then, obviously, you get back to Getze. Sure, you, we all want to, everyone wants to blame Fields now. Peter King, he's only got a few weeks. Uh, Getze's very predictable. Very predictable. Teams know what he's running. He, nothing is uh, creative at this point. Um, it's it just not – this offense isn't fooling anyone. Like, I, you know, I think I heard Adam Hogue the other day say, like, that Chiefs game, it, it looked like offense versus JV. Like, no one's – you got no chance. Like, it's just not – it's not good. It doesn't look like an NFL offense uh, when you watch it. Um, it's very vanilla. Um and, you, again, Fields holds blame in that. There's no doubt. The whole point of this is not to say blame everyone but Fields. Fields is in there, too. But you get the feeling with, oh, Peter King, he may have a few weeks. Ryan Poles never told me he was fully in on him. Well, he had the number one pick and traded it, which I'm in favor for still because I like the QB draft class next year. But still, eh, CJ Stroud looks pretty good. Just, just want to throw that out there. The point being is – they're going to make Fields the scapegoat, I feel like, and that's fine. You do that. But that doesn't mean the rest of us should just buy into the, what the rest of this looks like. Like, we should not just be like, oh, yeah, well, when they pick their quarterback, it'll all come together. Is Justin Fields the reason this defense sucks? Is Justin Fields the reason Ryan Poles has missed on a couple draft picks? No. Like, he, you can't blame him for everything. That's, that's the only point I'm trying to make. So what is the biggest problem right now? Type C for coaching, P for Ryan Poles, or F for Justin Fields. Let me know in the comment section because it's a combination of all, but to just blame it on Fields, I don't think that's fair. Let's get to 74,000 subscribers here on the channel. We're less than 600 away. YouTube.com slash Bears now. Support the movement. Support the channel. We appreciate all of your love and support. Uh, we go live every Thursday, by the way, so we'll see you guys tomorrow as well. Before we get out of here, here is our Wednesday injury report from Hallis Hall. Jalen Johnson and Josh Blackwell did not practice with a hamstring injury. Eddie Jackson also did not practice with that foot injury. Good news, Tyreek Stevenson, full participant with what they're still listing as that illness from Sunday. Uh, not sure exactly what happened there, but he is a full participant, so that is a good sign. But with Johnson and Blackwell not practicing, I think it's even more explanation to why the Bears signed Jawan Williams from the Vikings practice squad. Big physical corner, but uh, 
let's just assume, let's say Johnson and Blackwell are out. Kyler Gordon's already out. You're probably looking at Tyreek Stevenson as one outside corner. Terrell Smith is the other one. And then Greg Stroman in the slot with Jalen Jones and uh, Joan Williams as your two backup options. So that's where things sit right now. The secondary is banged up. Uh, it's not ideal, but, man, I don't want to hear any excuses. Like, you've lost 13 in a row, man. Find a way. You're playing another 0-3 team. Find a way. you got to find a way, man. It's not like Denver is just – Lighten it up. Have they played a little better than you overall this year? Probably. They also just gave up 70 points. You're at home, man. Come on. Have some pride. Go out there and win a football game. All right, guys. That's going to do it. Subscribe and join us tomorrow. Bears Now Live on Thursday. We'll have a video in the morning, and then we'll be live in the afternoon as well. Some more content to come your way. Bear down or bear up, as Paleo says. We'll see you soon.